so Inkheart opens Friday. Mm -hmm. Looks like a great uh, family adventure. Looking forward to seeing the number of people who already know the novel show up to this movie and, with my fondest hope, be as delightfully surprised that we've been able to stay as true to the novel as we have. It's a best-selling book. And then it was sent to me under very unusual circumstances, given that the author apparently had taken inspiration from work that I'd done as an actor to write this book. I mean, that's something that doesn't happen every day or oh, that is, in a that career. Is yeah. Well, it was the novel was inscribed. Dear Brendan, thanks for inspiring this character. I hope that you get to read it to your kids one day. And as it turns out, it was a good book, so I was happy for that. We worked on it towards becoming a screenplay and then into a film. I should mention also that somewhere in between, I did go and meet the author in, in her home in Hamburg. And um, our families became friends, and uh, that this first novel, Inkheart, is the first of a trilogy, Ink Spell, Ink Death being the other two. There's always room to expand, so maybe we'll be back with parts two and three. I'm warning you. I have no control over what comes and goes. I have no idea what's going to happen. Well, this should be fun, then. Let's give it a whirl. Cassim gazed upon the treasures within the cave. Mounds of gold and silver were heaped from floor to ceiling. Piles of silks and sacks of jewels. <laughs> franchise on your hands? Could be. Could be. Who knows? Um, ob obviously, uh, audiences know you for the, for the Mummy franchise, but you've also done, done movies like Crash, The Air I Breathe. In the last summer, it was During the Center of the Earth and Mummy 3. Are you kind of keeping your, your one foot in the in the action and the, the other foot in the, in the family movies? I keep you, I'm keep keeping my feet in my boots on the ground right now, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't let that one go by. I just love to work. What can I tell you? Absolutely. <laughs> you show me any actor who doesn't who doesn't feel happiest when he's doing what he's allowed to do. Fortunately, he's lucky enough to be able to do. And I'll show you someone who's not telling you the truth. What well, I, I feel and luck is an operative word here. I feel I feel like it's a privilege and a responsibility when you come and you tell stories and you make movies out of them. You know how hard it is to make a movie? It's not easy. <laughs> I, I know this from the very beginning to now what we've got on the screen. Because I saw that the novel got turned into a screenplay, directing, putting together a cast, all of that, everything. It's like, it's like launching a rocket every time you release a movie. So on the 23rd, hopefully fans who already know the story will be coming. But at the same time, I hope that they bring friends with them, too. Because this is a piece I think that's important. It includes everyone. It, it, it really takes advantage of, of, of literature, of what it means when you are able to hydrate your imagination simply by reading, as opposed to seeing, um, you, get, getting, get, getting those ideas from, from television and films. But the cool thing about the way that we've done this movie is we haven't condescended to the audience and said, go read a book. You know, hasn't wagged its finger at anybody. What we've been able to do is to include them and pique their interest and remind them that there's a lot of great literature out there. And the reason that we have great films is because of great stories. Now, other than the way that you got involved in this project, is there anything unusual or, or different than, than other movies you've made? Is there anything unusual or un compared to this? Well, they all have their foibles. Let me tell you that. It depends. The good thing about this one was that we were able to shoot on location in Italy, in the northern Piedmont region. So we actually went to where these castles and ruins and ancient habitations were to use as our set pieces. Um, the, another great thing is we've got an ensemble cast that includes yeah, Paul Bettany, Jim Broadbent, Andy Serkis, Helen Mirren, 
I understand she's good. That was the year that she won something called an Oscar. That was an exciting <laughs> year. There's an emerging new talent in a young actress called Eliza Hope Bennett. And uh, she plays my daughter in this movie. Anyway, look, there's a fantastic cast right there in place ready to tell you a cool story. Or you, you mentioned you mentioned kids. Is this something that you're, you know, your family and your your relatives and their kids, uh, you're, you know, kind of setting out to make those kinds of movies as well? Gosh, I hope so. Um, this has this has a real strong following in it being a novel, as right. I mentioned, um, and this is certainly. A, a film where a family certainly can come and feel like they're not being condescended to, they're not having, just put it this way, I know that you can't kid a kid. <laughs> if you've got a good movie on your hands, they'll know. If they don't like it, they run through the door. <laughs> no one's Great. walked out of this one since I've been seeing it. <laughs> oh boy, I've been talking about this movie a lot lately, my friend. <laughs> well, it's good though. No, it sounds like you're excited about it. And... I am. Now, now, of all all of your uh, your work in, the, in films and and everything, are you hearing anything about making movies here in Michigan, where where I'm at here? Uh, no. Do, do, you, do you have a screenplay? <laughs> I was looking for a job. <laughs> no, no. I mean, they're offering incentives to to make movies here. Oh, so good. If you've heard anything among your your friends and I will put my ear to movies. the ground on that one. I promise you, because I uh, whatever the incentives are, be they rebates or I don't know, tax cuts or something like that. I know that Michigan's full of great locations. That's for sure. And what every director and producer, screenwriter, and actor, et cetera, that I know, they'll shoot their film wherever they can get it made, which is important. And if um, if the filmmakers in Michigan get step right up, then you know what? We don't. We, we do we? Do you know if Gross Point Blank was actually shot there? I think some of it was. Some of it was. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, let's see if we can't come along with another movie. It's features right. mission. Well, and, and Grand Torino was shot in Detroit. So. Good deal. I didn't know that. Uh, now you've got another another pretty big movie coming out later this year. Uh, I got to ask you about that real quick. GI Joe. Uh, you know what? I am in it for like that fast. I'm a cameo. Um, I'm glad you asked me about it. The producers of the Mummy and director of the Mummy the trilogy. Right. Uh, re- friends of mine and I actually begged them to be in it because I was a big G.I. Joe fan. I had right, my, my my Joe wound up dangling from his parachute strings from a tree <laughs> an entire winter <laughs> because the parachute did not deploy. Exactly. Anyway, exactly. Uh, but when I heard they were making the movie, I was like, can I come too? Can I be in it? I'll wash your car, please. <laughs> They're like, okay, all right, fine. All right, well, Brennan, unfortunately, I've got to wrap it up. Uh, thanks, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll uh, all go out and see Inkheart on Friday. Bring some kids. Bring Grandma. Why not? <laughs> all right. Thanks, Brennan. Have you will. Bye. Take care, Aaron.